enough, we'll call the uh, Rochester Common Council November the 28th of order. And as usual, we start with the Pledge of Allegiance. And Councilman Garrett, would you start us? Certainly. Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, did everyone have a chance to take a look at the minutes from our meeting of October the 24th? So, and there are no corrections or additions, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes from October the 24th. So moved. Second. It's moved and seconded by Councilman Fitzwater to approve the minutes. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. Okay, and the Board of Public Works and Safety minutes were included in your packet for reference. Um, communications, December <coughs> meeting change. Ted and I were asked yesterday if we were going to leave our meeting set. Right now it's December 26th, and we hadn't had any conversation about changing it, but I thought I would bring it up just in case anybody had any thoughts about wanting to bump that back a week of the day, back or back a day, or happy, or if you just want to leave it alone. Um, the, media, I, uh, was, uh, the media was wanting to make sure they had the calendars correct. So. Well, it's a, it's a good point. It's the day after Christmas, and if folks are traveling or such, uh, we may not even be able to get a quorum. What, uh, what's the group's consensus? Here with the 19th of our 19th? Open up the week. I did talk with Councilman Heidi, and he said the only day that the week before that he would not be available was the 18th, which is a Monday. So he said the 19th was fine with his schedule. Let's just, let's just tell Wes we're meeting on the 26th. <laughs> <laughs> tell Wes we're not changing. <laughs> no, we love you, Wes. <laughs> uh, yeah, the 19th is fine. Is that fine with everybody? Does that sound like a good idea, first and foremost? Yes, it does. It really okay. does. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, I'd entertain a motion to change our meeting date for December to the 19th. Still at 6 o'clock, right? At 6 o'clock. Unless you're you guys want to bump it up. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded by uh, Councilman Thompson to change the meeting to the 19th. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand, and it's unanimous 5 0. I'm sorry, who made the motion? I apologize. Goodman. 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 Okay. Okay, uh, now we're going to go into a public hearing here. Uh, we have uh, Casey Coles here with the Area Planning Commission. Casey, I would, uh, oh my gosh, we've moved the podium. So, <laughs> close to the exit. Casey's request. <laughs> we have it as close to the door as we can get it. Not <laughs> I, was, I was looking up for her best interest. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Casey, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, the Planning Commission, uh, as you all know, they were looking at wind turbine um, amendments for the current zoning code. The current zoning code has wind turbine regulations in it that um, allow wind development within the county. They were effective January 2008. Um, that those actually were written during the time between 2005 and 2008 when the area plan was being created. Um, when there was a company, uh, there is a company that is looking at coming into the county as well as going into Miami and Cass. And during discussions and reviewing those codes, um, basically the topic came up to update. So I took it to the planning commission and asked them if they wanted to update it. I brought them. Um, throughout the first the two meetings that we had to look at them. Uh, I think it was 15 different counties uh, to look at and compare to to see what the codes were. Um, the planning commission at that stage created um, some amendments to the existing code to update it to other codes. And they certified those to other legislative bodies. So legally, the way that the IC code works with an area planning commission is that all of the legislative bodies are independent. 
uh, with the regulations that are effective within your jurisdiction. So the, um, this council has a jurisdiction, sole jurisdiction inside the city of Rochester, and you have the sole ability to amend any code that's effective within the city of Rochester. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is that the, the most com controversial aspect of these regulations, the commercial wax, the commercial wind turbines, which are referred to as wax, um, those have to be in an ag or an ag protected district. So in order for these to actually be within the city limits, uh, you would have to have agricultural or an agricultural protected district, which isn't unheard of. You could or you may um, have it in some areas within your city limits. But then once you start taking all of the setbacks that are within these regulations and overlapping them, as far as so much distance from a house, so much distance from a roadway, so many distances from property lines, you, they stack. It is not one or the other, which has been um, a little bit of misinformation out there. It is not one or the other. They all stack on top of each other. So you, you put the road set back in, then you put the house set back in. So this first setback may start out looking like this. The second setback widens it out to this. Then you add a third layer of setbacks from property lines, um, and that setback may go like this. Um, so. For an actual commercial WEX to be located within the city, plus on top of all of that, you have an airport overlay district, which we created in 2008 to protect the Fulton County Airport and the economic viability that it maintains for not only the city, but the county. So you actually have the airport overlay district that is not only triangulated over your runways in oval patterns, um, starting at the runway and moving out, there's three layers, and each layer allows a, a taller structure. Um, there's also as you move farther, as you move farther out, right? Farther out, <clears throat> um, and then there's triangulation off the ends of the runway, which is a totally different ratio as far as how tall things can be. You go from about a one to thirty-four ratio to a one to seven ratio on your on your approach patterns. So. You have this um, also within the city, so that is also an aspect. So for you to have a commercial wax within your city limits, I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but it, it's very slim chance. Um, one, the reason why you have the ability, or you have the requirement that you need to approve amendments to this code is because there's also a setback within this code that is from municipal boundaries. So your incorporated limits also has a setback. And because of that, this code is actually effective in every single area within the county. So all the legislative bodies have to look at this code and, um, and approve the original one and then approve any amendment to it, which is why I'm standing here today. Now, does all of that make sense? Short and narrow of it. Yeah, I wasn't. Stop it. I didn't know you get stop it. <laughs> Basically, because of uh, the setback stacking and such, we could, uh, let's say we annexed or something, we could end up with an issue. Uh, what's our, what's the setback city limits right now of our own protection? The certified setback was, um, for municipal, was 1,500 feet, unless an executed or recorded waiver from that municipality is granted. So we gave, um, when the Planning Commission looked at it, they actually gave the option for municipality to waive it if they needed to. And one of the things that they were thinking about when they had that discussion was Tippy Valley. Tippy Valley is a prime, a prime case. You know, if you had REMC who wanted one, or um, and that's hypothetical. That I totally pulled that out. They have not talked to me. <laughs> Don't tell me to go off on that. Um, that's sorry. just an example. Sorry, Joe. sorry, Joe. That was totally hypothetical. If we if we had a utility that may want one or a school or something, um, then that would allow the municipality to again just have their own control over their area and what they may or may not want to do. So, and if you annex, one of the things that Akron had asked me, if you annex land this setback moves with the annexation okay. okay so it does not stay stagnant at whatever it is today it will once you annex and your incorporated boundary moves the setback also moves with it 
Now, one thing, uh, the commissioners did have their public meeting, uh, their public hearing on it. Their, what they chose to do was to remove commercial wax from the code entirely. And that's for the unincorporated area. Now, what happens now is that vote goes to the planning commission with their written comments as far as why they chose to do that. The planning commission by state law now has the ability to look at that and agree or disagree. And so they can agree with the commissioners and if they do, then it is um, effective in the unincorporated area. If they disagree, then they send back their changes um, and their, their reasoning of why they disagree and the commissioners would have another vote. They have an opportunity to discuss whatever that decision was um, that was sent back to them and they would have another vote. Now once they have the other vote, then whatever they decide is effective. So right now we're working on um, state mandated 90 day deadline from when the planning commission certified you guys, everybody, the codes, which it happens to be Christmas, December 25th. <laughs> so um, what I suggested to most of the board is let's hold off, see what the commissioners did with the unincorporated area so you would all know, um, and then you can make your decision from there. Now again, this is wholly your choice. Uh, this code, this is what's effective inside the city limits. If you wanted to carry with the commissioners, you could say the exact same thing, although I'm gonna ask you to change it a little bit because I didn't have a chance when they did it. Um, or you could say, no, you know, we, we want to keep the certified amendments in here. We want to change this or that. Um, just be protected in the future in case the county changes their mind. I mean, it, for whatever reason, you guys, it's your choice. It's, it's your code. Why would we, just sitting here rolling it around, why would we not just make our setbacks greater? You can yeah. That, that's what I mean. It, it really is your choice. However you want to do it, because the way it's written in the code is if you differ from the town of Fulton or the town of Akron, then it will say effective within the city of Rochester, and it will have your said codes. <coughs> and that's, now if somebody agrees with you, then we would put effective, say Kiwana agreed with you, they would say effective within the city of Rochester and the town of Kiwana. And that's how we've dealt with it within the code where we have one municipality that wants something a little bit different because their particular wants or needs are different than everyone else, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Casey, is part of what we're talking about having, for lack of a better term, a ring around the city in terms of the thing? Is that right? Yeah. Basically, it would say, yeah, I mean, it's, your incorporated limit is not a, a, it's not a circle, but yes, it takes what, your incorporated limit and it goes like this. Is there a limit by the state law as to how far, the, is there a maximum? Setback? Yes. We, we'd say 50 miles. Sure. Well, we probably can't go to Fulton. <laughs> you can, realistically. Yeah. It would be slightly rude for the other community. <laughs> you know, they have the same choice you do, and, and I think you're taking that out of out of their, uh, you know, well, their scheme things. Ten miles, fifteen, but there's no okay. limits, that, as far as you know, uh, well, if we do anything. State law does not dictate what your zoning codes have to be. Now, on the flip side, of that they will tell you what you can do. You know, there are certain you can't do. Um, you know, you can't say, and, and prime example, you can't take a single white mobile home and, and completely exclude it from a county. You can't say, I don't like, and this was really hot back in the 80s and 90s. A lot of communities said, I don't like single white mobile homes, I don't want them here. And they excluded them, and there were lawsuits, and the state said, no, you can't do that because of affordable housing. So when I say there are things the state says you can't do, that's what I mean. Because there's other laws that circumvent it. Affordable housing laws will not allow you to completely take out a small domicile because you do not like it. You have to allow it somewhere. But here's the situation, I mean, if I'm interpreting it right. Say we put in, uh, the council decided to put in a zone of protection that goes out, say, three miles. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that protection not only from the wigs, but anything that else that might come along, but it still doesn't uh, uh, eliminate the possibilities of a boat board zoning approval for a variance or something, correct? To come within that uh, setback. Well, if you were talking about, in this particular case, it's only for WEX. Um, if you wanted it to apply to other things, you'd have to be specific and say oh, it see. applies to other. 
it yeah. applies to you solar, have to it applies the specific things. You have, have to name specific things. Otherwise I wouldn't know what to enforce. Okay. And people Good. reading it wouldn't know what you wanted. Okay. Um, so in this Did particular you, case, if you wanted to expand your municipal border or a setback for three miles, then you would just say that our setback is three miles. And if you wanted to keep the waiver clause in there, then again it puts it back at this table. If someone says, well, actually, I'd really like to do this, then you look at it and think it's a good idea, and, and you allow. And that was the purpose of putting it in here. Yeah, I suppose undesirable structures that ambiguous. A little bit. A little bit. It'd <laughs> be yeah. wonderful, though. Well, subjective. Because I'll think of like what you said, is you're in your examples, when you look at the distance around the city, and if you take examples of what you have, Valley or any of those others, you could be hitting that two to three just because of our distance. We're not that large. But as long as we leave a waiver option in there, then the council would have the opportunity to review it and say, okay, that makes sense. It could be a large industry, you know, that came in and that wanted to put one up for commercial use. I mean, I mean, these are all what How many, how many yeah, turbines does it take to make a one of them? Is it a single one? Mm -hmm. or is, oh, so a wind energy one conversion system is the official name of a commercial wind turbine. Okay. So that it could just be one, one. single turbine. Okay. Yeah, when I was doing research, some of them had 10. You know, some had 15. You know, I mean, they aren't all 500. But it you know, depends on your area and where you're hooked up and the kind of power grid you have. There's a lot of different components to it. The purpose of this is it all windmill turbines or just big monster ones? No, this particular code actually deals with everything. It deals with all wind energy conversion systems. So it deals with non-commercial and it deals with commercial. Um, the commercial wax has been what the controversy has been about, but the non-commercial wax, which would be what um, Mr. Belcher has one on his farm, um, Mr. Streeter has one in his business. Those are non-commercial. They're utilized for um, the energy on site. Now, and that's actually one thing I wanted to talk to you about. Um, I need the commissioners to also change this just for future protection uh, for non-commercial entities. But the, the definition that the planning commission, when they certified this, we went over this quite a few times, trying to find the correct language. And I actually found some language after the planning commission had certified this in Hancock County. And I think it illustrates it a little bit better as far as um, the way that it reads. I, I think it would help protect that use a little bit better. Currently, the definition is um, all necessary devices that together convert. Um, the definition of what? Non-commercial. Oh, no. Okay. Non-commercial wax. Yes. And currently the certified copy to you states all necessary devices that together convert wind energy into electricity independently consume the electricity and does not receive monetary compensation for energy. That phrase I don't like because it's not true. In some fashion you receive a monetary compensation. You know, whether they're they're giving you a deduction on your bill, if the net metering goes through, you know, however it works. I just, I'm not crazy about that language. Um, so, and then it goes on to say, this includes, but is not limited to the blades, the rotor, the nacelle, the generator, these are components of a wax. The foundation kind of goes through that. My suggestion to the, to the incorporator, to the legislative body, no matter what you do, is to please change this language to something similar to this, where it actually says, all necessary devices that together convert wind energy into electricity, independently consume the electricity, for on-site distribution to a farm, school, business, factory, or the like, and do not receive monetary compensation for energy except under the parameters of on-site distribution. Just to elongate that definition a, a little bit. Um, to make sure that, you know, someone who, you know, Mr. Belcher has it on his farm, he didn't put it there you know, for a lawn ornament, he put it there to benefit himself and for the environment. And you know, I just want to make sure that 10 years from now you don't know what the technology will be, and they may, may be more profitable for residential use again. Uh, and I don't want this definition to hamper someone um, by that statement. Does that make sense? Yeah. That was the you said Hancock County. I did. Yes. Yeah. Well, Hancock County has that definition similar to it. 
So the uh, resolution in front of us tonight is pretty ambiguous. <laughs> uh, what are what are we what are we uh, looking for here from the council? Uh, what's the resolution tonight would be for you to uh, agree agree with changes or disagree with the certified amendments um, that the plan commission gave you. So that would be yeah. in the packet that you all received the, the big blue binder. Um, so you would, if you agree with the certified amendments, but you want to change the setback, then you would state, you know, motion. I agree with. You know, the board agrees with um, with the code, except for the incorporated the setback from the incorporated limit. If you want to change other things, you can change other things. If you want to say, you know, like the Fishers did, we want to agree with changes, and our changes are we want to straight commercial works from the county, then you would state that um, in the definition for non-commercial. Thoughts from the council? Public hearing, I'd entertain some uh, comments from the audience if anybody has any comment. If you like to make a comment, please stand, state your name for the record. Let us know your thoughts. as quiet as a winter. <laughs> what do you think, John? I, I'm all for, you know, keeping our, as far as the boundaries go, keeping it, maybe extending it a couple of miles outside of the city boundary limitations. I think yeah. that's, a, that's a very good idea, but then again, I am also for if someone at their home or farm um, a business that would have to come outside of town wants to put in some of the smaller ones, like <coughs> Mr. Streeter's house and stuff. I, I really don't have a, a, a major problem with one of those. And that language would stay in here unless it, you wanted, the setbacks are separate. Mm -hmm. So you have setbacks for commercial and you have setbacks for, for non-commercial. Uh -huh. And the setbacks for the non-commercial and even the Met Towers, no one has really disputed. So th those would remain and they'd be allowed same as they are today, same as they have been since 2008. And so what, what verbiage actually do you want us to change on? Should it be changed before we make a decision? As far as the definition? Mm -hmm. The definition is just a separate section. So, I mean, the definition, I, I'd like, if you agree with what I read, I'd like for you to change that language mm -hmm. and the definition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they are still allowed. You know, non-commercial is still allowed under the, their own setbacks. and. I have to figure out with the unincorporated county exactly how to, what needs to come out for commercial and what needs to stay for non-commercial, depending on what the planning commission's decision is. I don't know what their decision is going to be. And with the state code, it, it's such a tight timeline. They only have 45 days. So I'm really, I'm kind of stuck on that. I, I'm really not useful with that information right now. But it wouldn't affect yours. You guys can decide whatever you want to do within your city limits. If you want to stay the same, you can stay the same. If you want to take it out, you can take it out. Hey, Casey, okay, so, so if you're if you're asking them to identify yourself, yeah, I'm sorry, Terry Lee with Fedco, um, to like basically make a decision in case the county reverses their decision and allows commercial, that they might be as a city be better protected even over what's currently in um, the county uh, commissioners and plan uh, uh, commission are reviewing to make a decision on so if that were to go different than what the c county commissioners have decided so far does the city want do they need to make a decision about that to like protect you know to expand that boundary for commercial wind development well i think right now with what the commer what the commissioners stated and then again depending on how what the planning commission decides and then if it goes back depending on what the final verdict is i mean if the final verdict is no commercial wind turbines in, in the county right 
then the code that is in here is kind of on point. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, now, the other I don't think I'd say that. I'd just say you wouldn't have to do it again. You so know, you'd already have them in here, and you wouldn't have to do it again. We're not, uh, so we're we're not staring down the... Uh, for commercial, we've already got it in place. So that way, the county changes their mind. Yeah. We don't have to, you're right, we don't have to come back and revisit this again. Mm -hmm. Versus if we take out commercial like they did, and then they change it, then we're going to have to come back and change it again potentially change it again. And if they, right. But we would have that timing option. In other words, they change that, make that decision, then we would have the option of protecting ourselves with a, a change at that point, right? You would. Um, well. Yeah, that's the question there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah I was going to say, the timing gets sticky because It's, it's effective in the in the unincorporated county as soon as the county commissioners either agree to certified amendments from the planning commission or they disagree it goes to the planning commission and it comes back if it goes the whole gamut but once the final decision is made in the unincorporated area it's effective yeah once the bells rung then we can't go back and unring it <laughs> so if kind of what yeah. i'm dealing with now with all of the legislative bodies i, I kind of juggled all of you so that I could talk to you and you would, you know, hopefully everybody would kind of know what everyone is doing. Um, if I can't, if your meeting schedule is different and I can't get to you until after, you know, we can't have this discussion until after the commissioners, everything's effective. It could be effective in the unincorporated area and whatever you have in there is effective here. Does that make sense? Inside your incorporated boundary. Yeah, we could be caught in a pinch. So it would make more sense for us to try to make a decision on what we want to do tonight. That way, ours, you have our information where our thoughts are, what, you know, with recommend, with amendment changes or however the verbiage changes, things like that. Then we have ours off the table. Yeah. We're taken care of. Yeah, I, I'm thinking it would be prudent, Council, for your thoughts to go ahead with the setback change for the weights and uh, benefits a non-issue, it's a non-issue, but it's better to be a little proactive than to be sitting here saying, well, we can't do anything about it now. Right, and if there does come a time where you know, the commissioners <coughs> do decide to revisit it, the planning commission would be having meetings and, and, you know, even if they make changes that you guys think, oh, that we play it like that change, we can change ours, you can still do that. You know, but you would have the base the basis of where, we're at. of where you're at, maybe. Yeah. So if we said, if we say, if we, and I'm not sure what your, you know, uh, what would you call it, a safe, this a safe, good safety zone, two miles, three miles, four miles. What do you know, think? Well, safety zone. I think it's more your annexation because again, it's going to keep moving. Yeah. You know, um, you know, if you did, <coughs> if you did a two or three mile radius, you're pulling in um, Mill Park. You know, I mean, you have assets outside your incorporated boundary. You know, that would pull in the arc, the tip of it. So, I mean, you can look at it that way. Um, I really think it's up to you. I mean, this, I don't, I can't sit here and say it's safer to be two miles versus five miles. I mean, I think that's more of your aesthetic views and safety, but if you really disagree with me, so. <laughs> I think before we nail down, um, what that distance would be, I'd like a consensus from everybody up here on whether we should do something like that. Yeah, well, I wondered, were you familiar with where that proposal was, where it was going to span the three counties? Were you familiar with where they would be in Fulton County? Where the turbines were going to be? No. Um, I, I, know, I remember them saying that there may be some within Rochester Township. Two. So I was wondering if we, if we have a, a circle, the ring, whatever. Mm -hmm. Is that encroaching on the area and not even close to where it would be? That's, you know, if someone's already signed a lease and we're, you know, are we able to take that away? I, I guess I would be surprised if it'd be within two or three miles. I, 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 I'm not sure if I was wondering. I've never seen it. I don't know. Matter of fact, the first time I heard that there was even any in Rochester Township was from <laughs> Umbaugh for the, um, the presentation at the public meeting in full. It was late. 
What's that? It was late before they said anything about him yeah. being in Rochester Town. That's yeah, it was that thing. week that That's I think. Good point, Brian. Right? Uh, is the consensus we should do something uh, to protect our situation? Yeah. Again, uh, it's a public meeting. We got residents of Rochester out here. Anybody uh, disagree with that position? We should uh, do some protection. Yeah, what do you think? Ten miles. Ten miles. <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts on uh, extending the, the setback three miles? That's what I was going to say. It's three. Three. Okay. Now, the unincorporated limits of a municipality is also grouped in with platted communities, which would be your subdivisions, um, or residential districts as defined by the Fulton County zone map. Uh, it's measured from the center of a wax to the nearest incorporated boundary line, platted lot boundary line, or residential district. Um, so this category could be just for incorporated boundary. You have, um, and I don't know how this will come into play on a map, but you also have a lot of setbacks that begin in the city and end in the county. So your boundary line for inside the city, at this, if you included all that, would be three miles out with their boundaries at your city limits which would be the same um, and then whatever setback the unincorporated county had for their subdivisions and stuff would just overlap that so do you want to include the three miles for that entire section that entire paragraph or the residential districts um, within your city and keep in mind it's all inside your incorporated boundaries so it's not Fort. you know it, it'd be the subdivisions on the other side of park road you, so i mean they all kind of Overlap, but then, um, yeah. Thoughts? Well, I think we're looking at, if we're looking at protecting, protecting the integrity of the city, at some point, if we are going to annex, it would make sense to have a broader, you know, sort of you know, across Park Road or, or Mr. Belcher lives or whatever, if the state does annexed areas, mm -hmm. you, you've already included the further boundary rather than just the dotted line that exists now. Okay. Well, the, the boundary would grow with the annexation. Mm -hmm. If it moves out. Right. So far then, then our boundary, <coughs> our buffer zone goes out from that point on, so. But I think we're, if I understand Casey correctly, that are you saying we include just the dotted line or whatever those other areas were that are beyond the dotted line? Is that what you're saying? No, if your setback is different than the county's, let's say the, um, let's say the county decided to allow them in there um, again, and their, let's say their setback was 1,500 feet, then uh, from a platted community, then their setback is 1,500 feet from their subdivision in the unincorporated county but if your municipal boundaries are 83 miles you overlapped it you know again it's not one or the other so um does that i mean it, it's yeah, kind I, of I, I just understood the what you're saying yeah. i don't think it really would matter either way to say the truth i mean you did it for all three of them like john said your appropriate boundary is going to overlap them um, there may come some odd circumstance why it wouldn't i can't think of it off the top of my head You've got to think that way. I do. Yes. I, do. I think that a lot, my job. <laughs> okay. The discussion pretty well in agreement. We need to protect ourselves. And three miles looks like a, a good number to use. Okay. Great. And you're okay with just, just doing the whole section, planning communities, residential. Yes. I'll make sure I put it there. Okay, well, commercial definitions yeah. to Casey's recommendation. Right. Commercial mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. definitions, okay. Yes. All right. Is there anything else in the certified codes that um, anyone was concerned about? This would be the 
the major one. I can tell you um, one of the things that I discussed with the commissioners prior to their meeting, <clears throat> they asked me to do some research on the shadow flicker and the noise vibration codes, and I had created some um, some changes to that a little bit, but it had more to do with changing it from not only going toward a non-participating house, but incorporating everybody. So whether the way that the certified code was, it was non-participating only is what the shadow flicker and the noise code applied to. And through the conversation and research, um, I developed some language that took that non-participating out. So even if you were a house and you participated, you were still protected. Again, this applies to you, and it would apply to you. Um, I don't know if you want to look at that tonight. I, I, you know, this would probably be something you would have time. So even if we did have a wife's developer walk in, if the county allowed them, they're not going to start popping them up two weeks after the code is effective. Yeah, you know, it's just not possible. So you would have time to look at that. I don't. So I don't know if you want to. I hate to drop it in your lap. Is what I'm saying. Right. I hate I, to have you try to read I, it on the fly. I'd rather. I'd rather yeah. look at yeah. it another time. Okay. Have, have a little bit of time on that. But. Okay. And then this may be something that the planning commission may recommend, and it may come back to you next month, and then you'll have it in plenty of time. I just. I didn't want to be. You know, not tell you that I have the language in there and tell you because it's all affected inside the city. Um, your three mile boundary is going to protect you over most of it, but um, okay, so we'll do that. My commercial, no other concerns about anything else. Uh, didn't see anything. Uh, anybody have anything else? Okay, I would close the public meeting then and. Uh, you need to have us act on this resolution at the time, right? If you would please, and then I'll take it to the planning commission on the way. Uh, I would suggest we move right to that so Casey can move on out of here. Probably got two or three other places to be. <coughs> you know, I, I would say something now the public meeting's closed though. I was I was a little surprised the other night at the commissioner's meeting, uh, the reaction of the people. I'm not sure everybody realized that the reaction that what the commissioners did just sends us back to the area planning commission. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Wes was there, he probably had a good feel for it, but I, I from what I saw from the pictures and everything, it looked like people thought this was a dead issue. But mm -hmm. this is not dead yet. No, it but it goes back through the through a different process mm -hmm. now and we'll have to have some more uh, legislation, right? Some more thought on it. It goes back to the commissioners and you know, the IC codes are, are very confusing, and that's why when I gave, you know, I gave all the legislative bodies one of these packets, and I know it's a lot of reading, and if people wanted to read it, they could. If they didn't, that's fine. But I tried to also put the timeline in there in layman terms, and had Greg double check to make sure I wasn't leaving something out, because it is confusing. You know, the client person had, you know, once they give it to you, you've got 90 days, and it's not a lot of time. You know, if you haven't been keeping up with it or, or aren't familiar with it, how big Sometimes that's difficult. But then the fine question has even shorter time, 45 days, to say, oh, well, we think you forgot this. Or, oh, wait a minute, are you, you know, this is research we found, and was this considered? And, I mean, it's it's difficult. Well, do you have any idea what the posture of the red folks are now? Okay. I have not spoken to them. I have no idea. Okay. okay. Uh, I would suggest we move right along to this resolution. Um, Council, Goodman, I, would, I would entertain a, uh, a motion to read the resolution in its entirety. So, motion by Thompson and seconded uh, by Miller. Uh, those in favor, signify by raising your right hand is unanimous. Council Goodman, would you read the resolution in its entirety? Resolution of the Common Council of the City of Rochester to adopt amendments to the Fulton County Zone Ordinance. Resolution number 10-2017. A resolution to approve amendments initiated by the Fulton County Planning Commission to the Fulton County Zone Ordinance. The proposed amendments were approved by the Fulton County Planning Commission at a legally advertised public hearing on September 25, 2017. Whereas the Planning Commission of Fulton County, Indiana did on the 25th day of September 2017 hold a regularly scheduled meeting of the Fulton County Planning Commission and considered amendments to the Fulton County Zone Ordinance and did approve the amendments proposed by the Fulton County Planning Commission at a legally advertised public hearing on September 25, 2017. 
And whereas the amendments were initiated by the Fulton County Planning Commission, and whereas said request did propose that said Fulton County Zone Ordinance be amended as attached to Planning Commission Resolution 09252017. With changes. With changes. With changes. Yeah. yeah.
there's a resolution for an additional appropriation, and per state law, we have to hold it as a public hearing to allow any public comment for it. Okay, that. well, we'll open up a public hearing again for this uh, yeah. this issue. That would be uh, resolution 13-2017. Uh, uh, okay. I'd like to explain what we're... Uh, Basically, what it boiled down to is the original budget for the Redevelopment Commission was $103,500, I believe. And through the course of this past year, uh, with some of the projects that came up that were some un unexpected projects, they need to go over that amount that was originally budgeted. Um, I have some outstanding bills that I cannot pay currently for the Redevelopment Commission because um, I have, they have exceeded, they have hit their max in their budgeted amount. They do have cash available. Um, with the additional appropriation, they would still have a cash balance of 57000 in their fund. Uh, but I do need the approval of the council for them to take their budget up from 103000 to, uh, would take it up an additional thirty two five. Um, so it would take it up to 135, 136,000 for this year. And there's, I'm not going to spend all of the 32, but I wanted to make sure that if, he, if they had any additional expenditures for the rest of this year, that it would be covered. Professional services and, and miscellaneous expenses are, are nothing but the legal fees. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm doing. How can you? Uh, that's two thirds of it. Yeah. The professional, that is for the, and this is where Terry can speak. The improvements out of the building? Uh, that was for purchases they did for one of their projects, for the BNT project that they did. Uh, they purchased some properties for that. And they will actually be recovering some monies back from that. It was a grant opportunity through the state. It was a bicentennial <coughs> grant. Uh, so they will recover some of that money back into their fund. But we have to go through the process with the state to get the grant money back. The professional services is for just that. It is all their legal expenses and their uh, grant writing expenses and projects. How much are you showing for legal? $20,000. Based on what you asked for. Expense for legal fees? That doesn't sound right at all. Well, the only legal professional legal. expense would have been for survey work. No, this is an addition. Structure. It's an additional for it. Because you that's what you when you emailed me back, you said to make sure that you had enough to cover the rest of this year because there were some other things outstanding. Those will be design those will be design fees, um, and environmental um, search fees, not legal fees. No, it's professional legal, it's all one oh, okay. line item. Okay. It's yeah. all one line item. It's, it's for design work for the nickel plate trail, not legal fees. Yeah, I just have, in, in his account, I have it labeled professional and legal. Both come out of the same line. Yeah, but the, the payments would be a green for either a consulting, environmental consulting design firm from any of the handling the design work for the trail extension. Not legal fees. No legal fees. We have Rachel Arp on the retainer for, what's that, a year? Uh, so no, $1,500 a year for <coughs> so that would suggest that you could get Perkins for a lot of less money. <laughs> <laughs> and you said Rachel, so that kind of negates that. <laughs> <laughs> I probably have confusion on that. Yeah, but that's we, how, his line item is. I have their professional and legal services are one group and one line item. I think. Uh, no, what expenses are not just the generalization. But that's just a lot of money. We come up in first December and say, okay, fuck. We need thirty two thousand dollars for our budget for the past year. Well, we've just been trying to push the project forward as fast as we can. So might be moving a little slower than some people think, but a little fast. I mean, we've just got, we've got everything cleared except the final end dot approval. We responded to them um, once so far, and if you're back to them within 30 days, that, that'll be our ability to move forward with acquisition, the easement, and then construction in 18, so. Um, yeah. I think 
think the expense we had that we weren't expecting was the purchase of the Betty Hill building. Um, there was 25 or 30 uh, to the Bailey's building. 30 to the Bailey's building? Uh, 25. 25. 25. 25. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I would have that much for it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that night, don't you? do, sure do. Yeah. Sean, what do we have invoice so far that we don't have budget? Uh, I have an invoice. I have. I was sending uh, worst case on my there. desk. I think I have, I have Rachel's last bill, which. What about the green three? Green three is. <laughs> Just shy of three thousand. Okay. So realistically, that's probably what I need. Mm -hmm. I was just assuming that we would want to keep. I mean, I could tell them to wait till January first to do a little work, so it falls within my budget for seventeen. But it sounds like three is probably what we realistically need. Well, no, that would be crazy. I, I well, would say comfortably. Rachel's. If you did, if you, if the only thing you guys would approve tonight would be five thousand dollars for professional. Legal that should cover what I have right now laying on my desk that I cannot pay because they don't have the available funds or available appropriation. They have the avail available cash on hand in their uh, fund. They do not have an available appropriation. And the now, what about the nickel plate? The uh, Land acquisition for the rest of that does that have to be done before the end of the year with the grant? No, that's we have to wait for the end approval first before we can do the acquisition before we can get the reimbursement from so the most likely the the major major. Terms. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, so we're okay with the rest of it. I'm sorry, how much is the reimbursement? <clears throat> it was half of the, um, the, the piece on 4th Street was 18,000. And then the other two pieces um, south of 12th Street were about. Was it 12? <laughs> How much was it, Larry? Good question. I don't remember. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was a Oh, the Fisher, the Fisher, the Fisher piece Fisher was there too. That was 73. I'm sorry, so that, that, but that's 25 free, so, 20, so 13,000 would be what we'd get back on about 26,000 in purchases. That's the acre and a half on 4th Street adjacent to Mill Creek <clears throat> that we purchased for future public room space. And then about an acre and a half, well, actually, plus the 5.3, so about six and a half acres between 12th and 18th that we had to buy or were going to have to buy when the dot says we can. We've actually bought some of it. Um, that we're actually going to build the trail extension on. Plus the nice woods over there too. So you'd be more public green space. You'd recoup half of it. Right. Through the bicycle Yeah, yeah. Like that <clears throat> yeah I'm not sure we... Uh, yeah, yeah, we can recoup the Fisher property. Since we've already bought that, we have to exclude it from some of the grant language with uh, DNR and Federal Highway and Army Corps and <coughs> IDEM and NDOT and everybody else. Um, but I, I think we get reimbursed for half of that one too, even though we've already acquired it. So we did that before we applied for the DNR grant, the $200,000 to the trail. We bought it before, but it was in the DNT. So yeah, we get half that back. Sorry. Because all of that was within, within my opinion, was all within the DNT for that purpose. Yeah. And would that money come back to the council, or would that just go into your your general fund? Well, no, it'll get receded back into his well, his fund. It was spent in the rebuild. Yes, sir. Correct. Will there be any other outstanding bills in December that will be actually in considered in this year? That's what I said. The ones I have laid, that's what I was trying to But I you don't, have so far, but I mean, are there others that, out I don't there? think so. I think the only one we'll have will be for the, the legal, the quarterly for the for Rachel. That hasn't came yet, because we won't get that till December. And I don't think as What's long as... What's the date of your last bill from Green 3? 
additional would be approved would there be if anything else came in it would also be enough to encumber in January from this if there were other bills correct if we needed to do an encumbrance for it correct <coughs> and then he will also get there'll be additional cat that I don't show on my sheet for the DLGF um, They'll be, he'll receive some uh, cash flow also in, with the December settlement. So he'll actually, his, his cash balance will actually go up a little bit. I don't, I won't have those numbers until we actually get our settlement in December. So he'll be, it would be, if he did the full 32,000, you know, he'll be probably closer to 70,000 cash balance at the end of December, 1st of January. Well, not too much on going to the whole amount. And that's fine. And like you, know, said, you, know, yeah. you know, when you're asking for 32, 32, five, and then you say, oh, but five will get us by. Well, then, you know, and I need your question, you know, really, well, what, couple, what's really yeah, that's necessary. Yeah, that's my couple well, of the fact that it's 32 is a heck of a percentage of your original budget to be over. Because it was 100, the original budget was 103.5. Yeah. And then you're uh, that's a, third, a third over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, that's something wrong. You're budgeting. I mean, I think that they're, they're spending, free they're spending and, uh, been free. if they bill for November, mm -hmm. plus Rachel's, I mean, five should handle everything we need for the year. And part of it was because we didn't know for sure when some of the DNR stuff was going to come in. So that's, we, we were trying to figure out if there was going to be any of that stuff coming in before the end of the year or after. So, you know, when we put, I have to put this together a month ahead of time before we have a lot of answers. So if he doesn't, if Terry's saying we don't think we're going to get any of that, then that's why I'm saying we don't need necessarily that full amount. That was anticipated. Yeah, I think we five, would five, five would cover the invoices that we're expecting. And that's under budget when we consider the purchasing the whole building that we did have budget for the year. So we're under budget, actually. That's good for that way. Mm -hmm. so how quickly do you need to action on this? I have to have it tonight. Tonight. <laughs> What do you think, folks? The, uh, the five, we have to have this rewritten in some fashion to pass it tonight. Unless you guys want to have a special meeting, because in order for me to pay, in order for me to pay the bills that are coming in, my last payout, I would need to have it, uh, well, I'd have to have it to Chris and get it processed before December 20, uh, 19th, because that's a pay week. Before the 19th. Before the 19th. Yeah, we the 19th. I know we meet the 19th. And that would not, if we met the 19th and you approved it, then <coughs> um, because we are, we have a holiday the 22nd, so my all of my dates get backed up a day. So Chris would have, instead of processing everything on Wednesday, she'll be processing everything on Tuesday. Well, I, I agree. I, I think the 5,000 is route to take and then that possibly gets you into a new budgeting period yeah if we get any bills in december i can if something carry them over in, I can, to the new budgeting yes, period yes yeah, so i could carry you know i could contact the vendor and say you know we can get this paid out the first of january without penalties so i it was just the ones i have right now laying as i we've got to pay <coughs> thoughts councilman fitzwater <coughs> Oh, yeah. 
Salvation Army. I think you all understand that we're raising money to help the poor and the underprivileged in the county. But Dick, I, I, I hate to move you, but you're giving your worst side to the TV audience. You're on TV. Would you like to stand at the podium? I stand at the podium. I'm, Thank you. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. It's still my worst side. I know I'm going to get called. I'm sick. really worried about this story. <laughs> I know I'm going to get called saying we couldn't see Dick. We couldn't see his face. Okay. Um, I've got some new people that's gotten interested in Salvation Army, and of course, you know, we ring bells to raise money. And uh, we've been kind of content just working with private property. But now I've got some folks saying, okay, we'd like to go downtown Rochester and ring from some of the businesses. I talked to the mayor and we hit a little snag there because we need your approval to set up one public claim in front of the business. So here's the thing. We would not attempt to ring in front of a business that didn't want us. Uh, we would get their permission before we set up. 
but we still need your permission to use the sidewalk in a public way uh, for that. And that's it. That's all we want. And and we would need that from middle this middle middle of November to Christmas Day. Okay, so you're talking more than the Windfest uh, festival. Uh, yes, okay. that Windfest brought all this up. Oh, brought it all up. Yeah, we're going to ring uh, at Winter. the Walgreens. Okay. On Winterfest. Yes. <laughs> okay. But then, now they're looking and saying, okay, we've got some really enterprising businesses downtown that have quite a bit of traffic, and why couldn't we occasionally ring for those businesses? and get more people involved in, in helping poor in the county. Yeah. So that's the question. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, Shada, but the, the policy of the past has been, as long as they were on private property, there was no solicitation permit required. Correct. But Correct. And I, I, would, I would add to what Mr. Inyer has said, is that uh, in, if you approve uh, them to, to do it downtown, I would also include a waiver of the fee. For the solicitation permit uh, as part of that uh, discussion as well. That's it. That's all we're asking. I have a problem with that. Comments? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sir. I make a motion to yeah. approve. I think I'll second. Waiver of the fee. Good uh, no, I don't know if Mr. Perkins is looking for, he, he brought the book out. So. Uh oh. <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> I, just, something in the back of my mind said we already carved out an exception to that solicitation for non -profits. Oh, really? Did we not do that? I don't, I... Uh, you may not have had the video. That's all right. I learned something tonight. I, think, I thought we did it for uh, Times three. transient merchants. Uh, we don't know about solicitation. I said it was motion. Yeah. Just a few motion, motion was made to approve uh, Mr. Inyard's request by uh, Councilman Goodman and seconded by Councilman Garrett. You approve it and you waive the fee, it is at worst a moot motion. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. Oh, okay. No harm, no harm in that. If it turns out. For the record, is, those in no favor, harm. please signify by risking the record. They all agree. They, they all agree. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you for your good work and your efforts. Well, and while you're, while you're here, Mr. Inyard, not only for the Salvation Army, but the compassionate health care. Uh, the United Way in years past, I could go down the list and name the numerous things that you have been involved in. Thank you for your service to the community, sir. Thank you. That's my dues. I said it on the radio. That's my dues for having space in this community. Okay. Okay. We won't send you the bill then. That's right. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, Next, Mr. Fitzwater, Redevelopment Commission appointment. I'm not seeing what was in the paper. <laughs> the paper said I, I, I was seeking it. the position. Oh, you're seeking the position? Yes. Well, you're all Oh, uh, there's an opening with the uh, Rochester Redevelopment Commission. Right. And it's been several months that we've done. It's not been filled. Uh, so I was asking some of the people, business owners, uh, with uh, Elliot Hazen. He's interested in doing it. He lives in the city. He has a business in the city on Main Street. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's in your in your area there, in your office area. Uh, Elite Dental, right about what, 715 uh, Main Street there. And he lives out. Right, right oh, across right. from the Community Foundation yes. office. Is this mayor's appointment or council? Council. 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 And I don't know if we have to decide tonight, but at least wanted to throw a name out there to you know, whoever wants to talk about it. I don't know Mr. Lee would be involved in that as well. I think that'd be great. Has any, anyone seen his operation down there? It is it is absolutely amazing. I stuck my head in there and yeah, of course they're making, you know, parts and stuff for the dental profession and implants and all that. It's quite an operation. They usually go, I think they work four day weeks, but they're working more than 40 hours. For people there, you know, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Some people could they come out on the weekends to do their work. Uh, I don't think you're 10 employees, I'm not sure. Not exactly there are quite a few people working in there. 
Oh, so yeah. kids, but. <laughs> okay. Throwing it out. But no, I'm saying it's, in terms of, you already talking about having skin in the game. Mr. Hayden is a business owner and uh, he's been very successful at it. Yes, so um, I'll throw that name at the, the council. Have you talked to him about it? Yes. Oh, yeah, no, I'm just not. No, I haven't. What's our names out there? No, no, no. Open the phone book. Anyone no, else? I, I didn't ask him. He's interested in doing it. Well, that's the main thing. <laughs> Are you making a motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion that the uh, uh, that they even be appointed by the council to the uh, redevelopment commission. Uh, is there a second? second that? And those in favor signify by convention hands. Thank you. Right. And Ted, I just realized you had some questions from the last meeting regarding the dog with the breeders that were here did you have it did you guys want to discuss that tonight or have you had a chance to yeah, i know what i left on the counter at home right now if i didn't go and pick that up in case you did um, i forgot to put that under old business mm -hmm. before you move on no. So do you want to table it again until the next meeting? So, yeah, you know, I've been looking at it for a month on my calendar, and you know where it's at sitting right now? On your calendar. Yes, it is. <laughs> and I've looked at it a bunch, but I don't want to do quote from what Casey had given to me. Let me out. Uh, Should we put that on for the 19th? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Under a old business for the 19th then. Okay. That moves us right into the uh, department head reports. Chief Butler? <laughs> You out the door to the clowns. For the month of October, Rochester Fire, Structure Fires 2, Rochester Township 1 in the City, Mutual Aid Fires 1, Henry 1, New Newcastle Township, Auto Fire Alarms 2 in the City, Calls for Smoke 1 in the City, Vehicle Fires 1 in Rochester Township, Illegal Burning 1 in Rochester Township, Accidents 2 in the City, uh, 2 in Rochester Township, 4 in Richland Township, when we drove the ambulance 1 from an accident scene, Medical 6, Medical assist, 16 in the city, five Rochester Township. Gas leaks, one in the city. CO checks, one in the city, one in Rochester Township. Service calls, three in the city, four in Rochester Township. Had a total of 49 runs and one drill. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. Wow. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I, I'm sorry. I have one question pertaining to what we discussed earlier. And since I do have a hands on understanding of that from my Sunday morning experience, what are we doing to cure this problem with Motorola? Um, it, it, it's really a, a, a county issue. I, I have, like, like I said, I, I talked with Gail before this meeting. Uh, she has had right now Motorola and ERS are on call or, or at, or at, at the dispatch center now. Um, they were here a couple days ago. Um, as, as the problems have been coming up, I've been trying to keep Gail abreast of, of what the issues are because she can't fix it if she doesn't know it's broken. Um, she said she's working on it. I said tonight, I, I personally, um, with her invitation, voiced my concerns with, with ERS and Motorola in, in, in saying that, you know, you guys have been here now for three weeks trying to solve this. Uh, I'm not saying the technician's not qualified to do his job, but I think at this level, it, it, it might need the next echelon and maybe the, uh, an engineer to come in for Motorola and, and, and try to solve the problem. So. Um, my, my thing is, is, is life safety, and, and Gail's on track with that. I think she is frustrated. Um, it, it seems like everyone's pointing the finger is always someone else's problem. But uh, I said they are again working on this issue. Um, the dispatchers came up with a quick fix where instead of the multiplex dispatching where they hit uh, fire department, EMS, and police, they were going to have to tone each department out separately and seem to be less static. But then, uh, like our call today out on Molson Road, just calling back uh, to, to go back in service and, and to give a report to dispatch, uh, for some reason the uh, the repeaters were dropping and it was coming in broken like uh, the dispatches were. So they're aware of the problem. Uh, like I said, they, they did improve the consulates, but now they're saying it might be the old radios across the street that operate the repeaters. So um, 
Andy's thing again, I think it's the next level. Like I said, it's not really Andy's or, or, or my problem. It's not the city's issue, though it does affect the, uh, the emergency services that we try to provide. Not so much the, on the police side, but it, it has, uh, like I said, I played you that one dispatch that I had stored, and it, it was, you couldn't understand it. So. Oh, thank you. Um, County is, I said, Gail is, is working. I said, I, I met with them, so she called them after my concerns today because they weren't scheduled to be here till tomorrow. Um, so she did call in and she invited me up there to personally convey my frustration and, and concerns with the, the personal safety of this. And they seem to be receptive, but like I said, it, it, it's, it's, it's pointing fingers at each other. So I said, all I can do is keep you abreast. What is it? I'm not sure. What is the basic problem? Um, the, the, the dispatch, uh, something to do with the repeaters and the, and the new boards they put in. I'll play you a copy of our dispatch from last night. Message, message, message three. When they dispatch, message, they get a multi flex setup and it goes this out. Is, with three this is a call for a possible strike. Uh, I said, fire medic. That, that's what we received. Um, is, that, so, is that because of the existing system that was there or the new system that they talked about putting in? Do you know? They, 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 okay. From what I understand, they in, it, it improved the consulates, and, but there's still the old radios on the other side. Okay. Um, I said, if it's burning, I can clear it out. I can solve that problem. That's, that's, I mean, this really isn't, I said, I went to, to them to convey my concern about this. This is life safety. Um, this, what it was was that someone burning leaves on the wall. Gosh, someone thought there was a house fire in Liberty. But, but had that been a structure fire with entrapment, uh, we, we could be very humbled in, in, in sorrow right now. Sure. Okay. So as I said, I, I think Gail's tracking it. Um, again, I, I'm just trying to keep you abreast. So if you hear complaints or, or problems, you, you know what what our frustrations are so well and it should be noted that it's a very serious situation and we we, we didn't pay a lot of money for that system to work no. but uh, as long as the dispatcher tones these groups out individually rather than as a group it's, it comes out all right seem to make some improvements uh, last but you got to make that announcement three times right three times but today we, we had a, uh, a a new incident where we were calling back we were uh, just past uh, 300 west on Olson road and in the transmissions uh they, they tried the portable they thought it was the, or the portable they got into the truck and tried retransmission and still the transmission was dropped so um, the repeater issue, uh, old radio system, and not talking with the new radio system. Like I said, I, I think uh, they said possible it could be some of the, the power poles that are around the uh, the jail and dispatch that aren't properly grounded, so that's a Duke issue. But like I said, I, 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 I'm not downgrade or downplaying ERS or Motorola, but the technicians that have been here, I think it needs to be the next level of expertise. Okay, Tom, well, I would ask, well, thank you for bringing it up, Council. I would ask that you keep very close to this because this is not something we can have drag out for weeks or months and days possibly, but it's got to get. Yeah, I, hear, I, I know Gail has, has been on them. They, they've been here several times. They'll do a pager checks and they, they, they think it's fixed, but then they'll leave and they'll do a, a multi dispatch or, or it seems like the longer they use it, the, the problems increases so I, I think it's like they, they think they fixed it. it it's working when, when they're here they do radio <clears> tests <throat> and it seems to be adequate they leave and then there's an incident or, or as, as progression goes it, it, it starts failing um, again after they leave so they have been here several times I think uh, like I said I, she, she called them back so I, I'm not sure I just think they need to step up and, and go up to the next level. That would, would be my solution. But. If you would, please be our representative check daily. I <clears throat> said I'll, I'll be out of, out of time the next two days, but yeah, I, I, I know. Perhaps Andy can. Uh, I said I'm not sure how, how much it affects the, the PD. It, it's more on, on the fire side. And, and I did I did talk with the other chief of the other uh, departments in the county before I went and talked with ERS and Motorola tonight to make sure it isn't just isolated to Rochester. It, it's, um, 
say Abinavi, I talked with Abinavi, I talked with a representative from um, Akron, and they're, they're in a low-lying area, so they have, they have a DLS system, I believe it's called it's a data over phone, uh, for a second tone, when they get toned, and, and, and that's the kind of issues, so. Um, well, then if you would, uh, maybe Make sure Chief Murphy makes a contact every day just to make sure and keep me in the loop on that. Okay. okay. Appreciate that. Thanks, Tom. Yes. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, Chief Shots. Good evening. Good evening, Chief. For the month, excuse me, of October. We had a total of 11 accidents. All of those were property damage. We issued 108 total warnings. Five of those were for city ordinances. 89 total offenses. 52 case reports. 688 calls for service. 35 lockouts. 16 tow vehicles and 21 people in cars. <coughs> and then you have a copy of the crimes that those people are lost for. Our usual customers. Unfortunately. Um, okay. Other than that, uh, we've got the Winterfest coming up Friday, so we'll be blocking off Main Street from 6 to 9. Um, from 6 to 8.30 is when it is. 8.32. Um, yep. yep. You don't have to move cars up. We're not, we're not getting cars out. We're just going to go down about 5.30 block everything off and get everyone out safely. Um, and then we've got Shop with Cop December 9th at Walmart to Saturday. And then uh, we've got several department trainings coming up this month. Um, our two newest officers, Officer Perkins is on, <coughs> on the road by himself now. Uh, Officer McIntyre is in a shadow phase, so he's on a shift with the supervisor and driving himself to calls and, and taking calls, but never by himself. He's always out of shadow. That's about it, unless you guys have questions. Uh, I'd just like to mention we've got a pretty good audience out there. And uh, for, the, for the public and the council, I don't know if they heard the story that a couple of weeks ago, the, the episode over at uh, Grace United Methodist Church during the uh, church service, um, it was an outside individual came in and tried to take a purse out of one of the back pews while church was going on. I guess the message would be everybody needs to be diligent over those, even in church. It's uh, We're in a small community, but everything happens here that happens in the big city, just not that much. We're not immune to anything. We're not immune to anything. And yeah. while, while you're on that subject, um, shopping season, uh, yep. holiday shopping, you're going out of town, um, keep valuables hidden, put them in the trunk. Yep. Be aware of your surroundings, common sense things. Uh, when you're going to your car, walk with your keys in your hand, don't fumble. Fumble with them looking down, don't walk around on your cell phone or texting while you're walking. Just be aware of your surroundings. Cover things up, lock your house when you're going, lock your cars. Common sense. Out there, aren't they? Yep. Yeah. Anything else for the chief? Thanks, chief. Okay. Uh, Mark is still right here. Okay. Uh, Eric. Yeah. Oh, is too late? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, know, they know I like to, I like to show you around. Yeah, my report. Eric's report that Randy is. Yes. <laughs> By the way, nice shirt. It's a good looking shirt. Thank you. Uh, for the month of October, the water department did the following duties. Red meters, orders, prepare to replace bad meters, locate, back wash the filter beds, shut offs. Uh, we did mow, um, cleaned the plant, swept and mopped it. All well houses and water towers are ready for the winter. Cleaned out the upper and lower garages, shut off all the sprinkling meters for the winter. Um, digs that were performed, uh, we fixed the water leak at 15th and sunset. The sewer department did assist us with the factor and the street department did assist with hauling in the gravel and limestone to fill that in. Uh, I will say that is, E and B has already patched that as well. Um, fixed a leaking curb stop at 1108 Arthur Street. Uh, fixed a leaking service line at 1537 Briar Lane. The sewer department did assist us with the factor. 
And then call outs, Randy Carr was called out on the 10th at 4.30 p.m. to 1603 Jefferson Street to turn the water back on. Um, this was not supposed to be shut off. It was supposed to be off the next week. Um, just a little mistake. And then Randy Wynn was called out on the 16th at 5.55 p.m. to 1688 Lucas Street for emergency locate for a gas leak. Imagine that, gas leak on Lucas Street. Um, he was also called out on the 22nd as well at 2 o'clock uh, for 1537 Briar Lane for the leak um, that I reported up above that we already fixed. And that's all I got. I, I, I like how you really just gloss over those things where it's our mistake. Just <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, like to mention that you do have a, an employee. Uh, yes, we do. His name is John Jackson. He started with us on October 23rd. And he's catching on and learning very fast. And I would like to inform the council that uh, I owe a debt of gratitude here to both Derek, Randy, and uh, the other department heads uh, that have been involved this week with uh, some personnel shifts we've made. You know, we came back from the holidays and had the time off and such. And with all the nice weather and everything, a lot of leaves around. And uh, with the recycling and the uh, bags pick up and the brush uh, uh, mulching and stuff, it uh, chipping, if you will, it uh, puts a real bind on the street department personnel wise to get all of our forces out there with our four leaf machines and, and attack these things. So we pulled some people together, and John was one of them we pulled from Derek's group. Uh, we're taking uh, his. John out with Derek's group for a week. We're taking a couple of folks out of uh, the other areas. Marcus uh, over wastewater treatment is providing an individual. Randy's been driving a truck. Warren's been driving a truck. And we've had uh, uh, four, well, tomorrow we will have four leaf machines out hitting it hard. We've had three in the last couple of days. We had a, a mechanical problem with some of the machines. But, but it's rectified. We'll have them all out tomorrow. It'll probably have the leaf situation pretty well rectified by the end of the week. So I appreciate your helping with that, man, and John's efforts. Randy, appreciate your helping with that. Nice effort. Thank you. Any questions for Derek? Thank you. Randy, come up. Project on 7th Street, the pipe's now backfilled. We got a 30 day wait so we can do the manual test and then we'll vacuum the structures and pressure the pipes. Uh, 4th Street, the LPA contract was signed and returned to NDOT. Um, we have received the preliminary plans for the reconstruction of 4th Street uh, for review. We should be getting the uh, bid package towards the end of the week. Uh, we received the bids for the demolition, removal, and paving prep for 117 East 7th Street. That was approved. The uh, FH Morris won uh, the bid, and that is to be done by the end of the year. And we're also working on changing the street between AT&T and Arby's to a one-way. So, we got to get that done, and then I got to talk to Attorney Perkins about that. That's it. Okay. Any questions for Randy? Thank you, Randy. Good job. Marcus had an issue with uh, the waste treatment plant that he had to address this evening. Called him, so he's not here this evening. Uh, and at this point in time, have a presentation from Lenny. Lenny is off for bereavement leave because we lost a 30-year employee this, this past week. Uh, Wade Conley, who served uh, this city admirably for 30-some years. Uh, known as the man on the mower. We've heard it time and time again what a great job and how much pride Wade took in uh, maintaining everything. As a matter of fact, during this week, the first absence of Wade 
we noticed a complete difference in our park uh, area. We, we, we had to take that approach and bring some folks in to, to work on a leaf situation that Wade would have had completely under control. He will be missed, and I would ask that uh, you all join me in just a, a moment of silence. I think that meeting's been moved to December 11th. Oh, to the fairgrounds. That's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I completely Thanks, waved it right over. Thank you. No problem. Thank you very much. Are you having your own meeting? Yeah. For one. Well, we're gonna, I'll make Christmas one. I feel like Christmas one. <laughs> Thanks, Wes. Appreciate that. By the way, our council meeting will be the 19th of December. <laughs> I earned it. Did you get that? Okay. <laughs> Okay, moving on to FEDCO, uh, Councilman Goodman. Yeah, FEDCO met November 2nd. Um, we, one, one time discussion was the uh, seat agreement uh, that we decided to pull out of in the county. Um, we just talked about that at that meeting, and I don't think it's changed. The county did not have FEDCO in its 2018 budget. So it's something to be watching. Um, Centennial Park the deed was signed over. A city officially owns the property, um, and it looks great. I might add, it's a uh, it, uh, you know I'm grateful everyone involved. Uh, Terry and Teddy has did a great job. That looks great over there. Um, Frank Boley is still in play. Um, he was to be in town the following Wednesday from the meeting to talk about his plans. Um, FEDCO did form a wind advisory committee uh, pertaining to the uh, wind turbines, and we did have a representative speak at that meeting for two minutes. Uh, FEDCO's position at the time is we were for the project with the uh, information that was available to us at that time. Um, the Bailey buildings, the project's moving forward. It looks like they have scaffolding set up and the brickwork is, was underway. Yeah, right. <clears throat> the US 31 Coalition, Terry attended a meeting on the 1st in Rochester. Uh, there seemed to be a split on what should be the focus of getting US 31 to limited access. Some of the tenants were, a favor, were in favor of the J-turns, some were not. Uh, NDOT has a plan to try to acquire land along 31 as it comes up for sale. And the NDOT estimate to finish US 31 to limited access is $1.5 and then finally, Gloria Carvey, um, site director from Rochester Ivy Tech, and Kevin Bostick uh, came to the meeting uh, talking about a program that's uh, going on. It's called the Workforce Ready Grant, and it's a pretty good program. It's for individuals who can prove they're an independent student and do not already possess a degree. You can go to Ivy Tech tuition free if you qualify for this grant. Oh, it's a wonderful program. So. Yes. <clears throat> Um, any question that's, that's in the airport. Yeah, of course, it should be noted that the J turn uh, situation is a moot point now. Uh, the governor has decided to X J turns uh, 
Miami County and Fulton County. Those are off the grid right Terry. That's right. Uh, and uh, Mr. Bowley is still in play. You're absolutely right. Uh, we're working with him very closely on his plans. Uh, uh, and uh, that's, yeah. Well, you'd like to add anything to the bit? Yeah, I've got a couple of things. Okay. <clears throat> when we talk about the, the wind um, projects, so I'll move on past that. We, we did get, um, as Fulton County, you know, the Brownfield EPA Brownfield Assessment Grant uh, in a partnership with, uh, with Logansport, excuse me, in a partnership yeah, with the city of Logansport. Um, we have uh, two downtown. Uh, properties that we've talked to potential buyers about the use of that. Um, we may use some of the, more of the, some of those funds to uh, continue to work on the, the rail line, especially if it's going to be developed as park or public green space. Um, the last one we had, the EPA grant, we um, two projects we worked on was Uncorked downtown, the new wine bar, Cuban wine bar, and also Top Motorsports, and those were those were. Uh, of a really nice incentive package that we were able to help both top and uh, worked out with. So that's a really great grant to have. Biggest one award in the state. Um, you talked about the uh, what prospects we're looking at for manufacturing jobs, including uh, Mr. Foley. Um, working with Downtown Partnership, we had a, a mental health counseling uh, service come in to the community in Rochester and open up uh, in the Solid Rock building. She has hours in the evenings, Monday through Thursday. Um, and, and what's her name again? Uh, Candace Patkey. I'm not sure what the name of the business is, um, but Candace Patkey, she's a licensed therapist, and she's doing some mental health counseling out of an office there. Um, Candy, I guess. Uh, uh, we work with Dillies um, on their business plan, some training, uh, some on-site training for them, and then with the town of Akron to set up a economic development target area of downtown uh, to allow tax abatements for retail and, and, and restaurant businesses in the downtown uh, area. And they approved the uh, tax abatement for Dillies, which is open now. If you guys haven't been, go check it out. It's really great. Um, <clears throat> on the Nickel Plate Trail, I reported, I apologize for my voice, I reported we have just one hurdle left that's in docks. Um, in the meantime, I uh, want to thank RTC Communications. They took some uh, old and telegraph for actually power power poles to the switches poles out between 8th and 9th street so it kind of helps us with the alignment for the trail um, and then also looks a lot better already too uh, so thank rtc for that um, and then also kenny anderson uh, push hogs and ground floors between 12th and 18th street so we can mark the center line so when we get contractors out there um, after we get the design work done, they'll know what the lay of the land is for laying the trail out. So that was, uh, appreciate Kenny Anderson for doing that. Um, on the, more on the training side, uh, looks like we're launching um, the MSTEM, the Motorsports um, Program at Rochester High School. That's a partnership between high schools in the state of Indiana and Purdue Polytechnic Institute. So a connection between Purdue and high schools to bring the STEM training. Um, science, technology, engineering, math, skills to the high schools, in this case through the medium of motorsports or racing. Um, so um, one reason we like that is that Indiana is a, a racing, is a motorsports state, um, and we have dirty engines and top motorsports here locally, so we're trying to support those guys. Um, Joel Lau told me today that he's uh, hoping for an event out at the uh, airport, um, because actually different high schools come together at different locations. and compete uh, after they build their cars. Um, and we had uh, sponsorships from, um, <clears throat> in addition to money provided by the school uh, corporation, uh, Fedco, uh, REMC, uh, Rochester Metal Products, and First Source Bank for our sponsors. <laughs> so they all brought some money to the paper to get that um, launched. Um, Yeah, I'm talking about 31, glad to see the city moving forward with a plan for extension of water and sewer at 25 and 31. And I just wonder <clears throat> if, if it should be, be too far off our radar since the J-term decision uh, looks like it's been made. Um, 
that we start looking at the county plan for what the, the next you know, interchange in Rochester where it's planned for now. Um, is that what we want? How does that work? Um, and then that's kind of the next place that we would want to look at a concentration for infrastructure. So right now that's 231. <coughs> so if we do get to limited access, you know, we have more than, <coughs> excuse me, one interchange in, in this, for the city. Um, of course, you're not anticipating the limited access situation. Right? Well, we know it's what? 10 years at least. That's their 10 year plan doesn't include anything for us. <laughs> right, but um, I think Brian mentioned that from the meeting that was here, I mean, you know, they, they do have, they, they don't have a plan necessarily for acquisition along the corridor, but apparently they have some, some funds available. Um, so that's one of the first steps in a project like that, I think, is it's going to take additional right away to put in an interchange. Where is that? And I'm looking at that. So, and I guess that's all for now. So, and I just questions or thoughts. I just like to say, you know, the, the statement was made that the county hasn't plugged uh, FEDCO in as a, as a oh, right. budget item uh, for this next year, and it's. We're, we're kind of waiting here in, uh, in pause mode. Uh, there's supposed to be some meetings in the near future to talk about the city's contribution towards FEDCO and the Area Planning Commission and the county's contribution and the other uh, municipalities contribution. And when uh, I left the last meeting and we went over and uh, presented a resolution, a new resolution regarding the seated funds, made it perfectly clear that we weren't wanting to leave anybody holding the bag. We were really willing and, and able to uh, fund our portion of the economic development effort. But basically, uh, since the rules of the game were changed on how those seeded funds could be used, now could be used for other things besides economic development, we felt it was time to take that control back of our portion, which is roughly $230,000 a year. So uh, it, it's still in that spirit that we want to see our economic development presence continue. Uh, Terry, I, I, I got to pat you on the back for the efforts that you've been putting in. You've been doing a pretty, pretty good job. I, I was very impressed. We did have uh, an opportunity to have a conference call a couple weeks ago with a uh, company who uh, will remain nameless, but it's a multi-million dollar corporation that, uh, their headquarters is in Mishawaka, and they operate with the RV industry. They don't make RVs, but they operate with the RV industry. Large, large corporation. They're looking for a plant in the immediate area because they believe the two plants they have in Mishawaka, they have exhausted the uh, labor resources there. They've pretty well drained the labor market there. And uh, this, this search, Lady, the, the HR lady, the search head of the search group, made a contact to us, and her comment was, you know, we were sitting in the staff session talking about where we should be looking to reach out to, and one of the staff members said, you know, there's a lot happening in Rochester. We need to contact them and see what Rochester can do for our situation. That made me feel good. I don't know about you, but I thought that was a great thing to hear from person out of the community looking to uh, locate something. So thank you very much for your efforts. And we'll, we'll be in that corner to see that there's some funding there. Uh, hopefully those conversations now will be held pretty soon. Yeah, I know we were, we were in the budget, you know, we were, we were in their budget for 2018 until the, the changeover. So I know they're, they're, they're willing to participate and that's great. Um, so yeah, just whatever happens, Time just work. Any uh, any other uh, questions about FEDCO for either Councilman Goodman or Terry? Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> okay, uh, Councilman Heidi's not here. Uh, uh, anything you want to say about the Redevelopment Commission? <coughs> yeah, um, <coughs> I guess so. I didn't think about that when I was here. Um, on the um, you know, with the city's plan for infrastructure 25 and 31, and then also the stormwater project downtown. I mean, you know, TIF is a source of 
you know, uh, funds available for supporting a, a bond as the city moves forward and looking for ways to you know, pay for those projects. Um, you know, I, I don't think Redevelopment Commission has any plans on the board right now to <clears throat> go through the available funds that we'd have for 18 and, you know, in sort of preparation for the discussion that the city might want to use those funds to leverage a bond. So that's a, that's that's a good point. On that side. Thank you. So we just need to, you know, redevelopment commission and those plans for bonding and stuff need to, we just need to know what the city council wants to do there. Okay. But that'll be tied in as part of okay. the revenue source. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're still to dismiss under the weather tonight. Uh, Councilman Thompson, Solid Waste and Animal Adoption Center. I don't really have anything to. Well, you're easy tonight, aren't you? Ask me again next month. Okay, sure. All right, any questions for Councilman Thompson? <laughs> no. Thanks, Chase. Uh, Councilman Fitzwater, we got the tree board, EMS. Well, nothing from EMS, but with the tree board, we met a couple times. Uh, well, the, the big thing was that the uh, longtime member, Ray Dawson, resigned, and uh, Jim Mulligan was re uh, appointed to replace him. Uh, Mr. Mulligan had been working with the tree board, I think almost the whole time I've been here, as an interested person. So, yeah. And he brings a uh, wealth of knowledge with him. Discuss the, uh, the payment of outstanding bills that had come through, and so I make sure that everything had paid that they did come through the uh, through the clerk's office. And then the uh, remainder need talking about trees that need to be planted, things that have been <coughs> removed or trimmed up. We need to do that, and uh, also the the talk was rather than being playing catch up and. You know, the only when things come in is to be more proactive in, in the city in terms of uh, apparently what had been years ago they worked in quadrants each year each year they go through different quadrants of the city and <coughs> that way they would know they knew it had to be done that year or the year after that they budget that way <coughs> so they're trying to be more proactive right, you're looking at that tree might be two three more years and that'll be it but get it on the, the calendar or on the watch list, I guess. So that's going to be one of the things that we're looking forward for as we move forward. That's all I have. Yeah, we want to uh, thank Ray Dawson for his years of service on the tree board. It was a several years. And, uh, welcome, Jim. Uh, I think uh, Jim brings a lot of. Uh, of experience and obviously in the, in that world uh, retiring as a senior vice president at Bike Lumber Company for a lot of years. Uh, any questions for let's go with Fitzpatrick or Fitzwater? Fitzpatrick <laughs> <laughs> this may this may be Irish <laughs> that makes it a call to your honor. <laughs> Okay, uh, Councilman Garrett. The water board. Yes, uh, water board approved the minutes of the October 13th meeting. And as Derek had said earlier, they introduced John Jackson to the board, letting him know that he was hired full time. And as Derek had mentioned earlier, he started on October 23rd. Um, the service pump in the old plant uh, needs to be replaced at a cost of a new pump would be about 5800 New has been ordered and would be delivered as soon as it comes in. And then I know that usually when we get those pumps and I see that we're doing that, the uh, going to get the old pump rebuilt and keep it on hand just in case as we do with some of the major items there, major pumps to keep as many on hand as we can have for emergency situations. And Derek also uh, presented to the board that uh, need the old box truck is on its last leg and they're going to need a new one and the most. Uh, Keith made a motion to approve this and uh, superintendent, at the superintendent's request and it was seconded by Carolyn and third by Marvin and so he, we're going to get a new box truck because the old one's old. <laughs> 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 and then the request was presented Derek, uh, to the board to change the road cut fees uh, from time and materials to $1,000 uh, 
uh, charge per cut. If you remember, we had had it at a charge per cut before. Um, about a year ago, they changed it to time and materials, and I'm glad to see that they changed it back to uh, $1,000 per cut. I think before it was like, what, 700 or something, was it, per cut? Well, officially, we didn't have the road cut. The city did, but not the water department. The water department. Okay. So now we do. And now it's okay in the water department. Great, but anyway, that's a good move. Uh, update was presented. Derek and the employees taking a vacation for the month of November. Randy Carr will be on vacation from 10 30 17 uh, to 11 6. And then Derek will be on vacation. We always tease him about this. But Derek will be on vacation from 11 6 to 11 13. And then Derek will be on, I said, Derek will be on vacation from 11 23 to 11 30. And, uh, How can he have so much vacation? I John? try to keep an eye on it, but, you know, one or two a month. It's great. It's a great job. And, uh, and, uh, and that was a. Uh, he just uh, gave another update on the monthly duties that we have received, heard from him earlier. Any other questions? So that, that's, that was a meeting was adjourned. It was a good meeting. Thank you, John. Okay. Uh, anything? Anybody with the Brown the Rochester Downtown Partnership? Uh, any comments? No? They, I, I will say I know they had a strategic meeting today from 12 to 2 uh, that did not get on my calendar until I looked at my email again and it was 5 till 2. <laughs> yeah, I, I, had, I had some other coordinations. Uh, so I apologize, sent an email and apologized that I had overlooked that I was out of town this morning. And it, it, so I'm, they were working on their 2018 plan so hopefully they got their strategic plan together and we'll be seeing that either next month or in January of what their thought process I do know they're still talking about some grant opportunities uh, that the Main Street program itself could apply for um, but I they're kind of waiting to see where our projects end up with the city before they move forward with that. So because if we do stormwater project and tear up streets, they don't want to go for a grant to do any kind of streets <laughs> inadvertently get damaged. So okay. All right. Um, no ADA concerns. Any legal concerns, uh, lawyer? I do not have anything. Okay. That's all. That is always good to hear. Isn't it? Yeah. It's like having a member of 60 Minutes knock on your door. That's not the most pleasant thing you want to say. Thank you, lawyer. Uh, so we'll move on down to our ordinances and resolutions. We've already taken care of two of them. Uh, looking at ordinance uh, 9 2017, Water Department Fee and Amendment. Uh, do I have a motion to read ordinance 9 2017. By title only. I'll say that. Okay, it's been moved that we read uh, the uh, ordinance 9 2017 by title only. Moved by Goodman, seconded by Garrett. Those in favor? It's unanimous. Ordinance number 9 2017, ordinance regarding water service fees. I'll make a motion for the second reading by title only. Make a motion by title only to read. Good man. Good man. Good man made the motion to read by title only for the second reading. And Miller uh, seconded. Uh, those in favor? Unanimous. Ordinance number 9 2017, the ordinance regarding water service fees. I would uh, accept a motion uh, regarding 9 2017. It's a quiet bunch tonight. <laughs> Ordinance regarding water service fees. Okay. 
discussion. Okay. I would accept the motion on 9-2017. Make a motion to adopt ordinance number 9-2017. Thank you, Councilman Thompson. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Goodman. Uh, those in favor of 9-2017, it is 5-0. to zero. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 11-2017, the 2018 Water Department Budget. And uh, that, of course, is the budget that Burns Beck always used to say we don't I remember that. We don't have anything to do with this. It's a courtesy budget situation. I would uh, entertain a motion to uh, read Ordinance 11 2017 by title only. Second. Okay, it's moved by Goodman, seconded by Fitzwater. Those in favor? It's 5 0. Please read it. Ordinance 11 2017, Ordinance approving the budget for the municipal waterworks of the city of Rochester, Indiana for the year ending December 31, 2018, and appropriating the several sums for the general funds of the waterworks for several uses and purposes as in the budget set forth. Okay, I would uh, entertain a motion for the second reading by title only. So moved. <laughs> got stereo going on now. It was moved by Councilman Garrett, seconded by Councilman Goodman. Those in favor? And we'll have the second reading by title only. Ordinance 11 2017, ordinance approving the budget for the municipal waterworks of the city of Rochester, Indiana for the year ending December 31, 2018, and appropriating the several sums for the general funds of the waterworks of several uses and purposes as in the budget set forth. Okay, I would entertain the motion to suspend the rules and have the third reading by title only. So moved. So motion's made by Goodman. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Miller. Those in favor? Five. Nothing. Ordinance 11 2017, an ordinance approving the budget for the municipal waterworks of the city of Rochester in Indiana for the year ending December 31, 2018, and appropriating the several sums for the general funds of the waterworks of several uses and purposes as in the budget set forth. Okay, do I have a motion? Uh, to vote on 11-2017. Uh, so moved. Second. Oh, second. Okay, moved by Goodman, seconded by Garrett. Those in favor of ordinance 11-2017, please raise your right hand. It's five nothing. Thank you very much. You. And we have ordinance 12-2017, bicycles and other wheeled conveniences. And this is uh, an amendment to our Original ordinance regarding the uh, bicycle. Correct. Uh, the uh, mayor contacted me uh, a couple of weeks ago and, uh, in reference to the uh, ordinance that was passed earlier in the year. And said, no, they mentioned bicycles in that ordinance. It'd be nice if it applied to skateboards, other other type things. So I kept I kept it largely uh, uh, the same as it was. I thought it would be easier rather than to amend an amendment. Just vacate the one you did earlier in the year and, and add some language here specific, <clears throat> broadening it from just bicycles to other wheeled conveyances, whether it be skateboards, inline skates. I, I kind of my list gets a little thin after that with what they'll invent next year. But um, um, uh, and other than that, I think it keeps everything else pretty much the same. So the mayor's suggestion I tender this. Um, my only question is just taking it verbatim. Yep. Could someone possibly look at this as um, and make a um, argument that wheelchairs or a motorized scooter? If that someone is the city of Rochester and they're uh, going at and they're ticketing someone, but this doesn't create a private right of action. So in other words, I, it, it, in theory, someone could read it that way. Um, I'm not concerned that the police are going to write people up right like that. So I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, that yeah, I hear where you're coming from. But and if it, if you create a private right, private right of action, then, then I, I appreciate that. Amy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was on the fence, but I just wanted to clarify. Well, I just wanted to clarify <laughs> because <laughs> right, you know, yeah. some people ask the question. Yeah, I deserve. And the, the okay. unique clarification for that from the police chief who tells you that. There is no hunting season for reindeer. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> but they would still have to do it at, in a manner other than for transportation, including stunts, tricks, or performance writing. Yeah, this 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 edition came. Challenge accepted. Uh, the result of the <laughs> all set the out there on the, the benches at the park. Uh, some damage work, some damage was done, and uh, so we got our signs up, but you know, dusting off the ordinance here a little bit. Um, I would uh, entertain a motion for the reading of Ordinance 12-2017 uh, uh, by title only. So moved. Moved by uh, Garrett, seconded by Miller. Uh, those in favor? It's five, nothing. Ordinance number 12-2017, an ordinance regarding bicycles and other wheeled conveyances on city or protected property. Okay, I would uh, entertain a motion for the second reading by the title on the ordinance 12-2017. So yes. Goodman made the motion. Second. Second by Fitzwater. Those in favor? Five nothing. Ordinance number 12-2017, an ordinance regarding bicycles and other wheeled conveyances on city or protected property. Okay. Uh, Second motion we suspend the rules and read the third reading by the title of it. Second that. Okay, motion made by Councilman Garrett, seconded by Goodman. Those in favor? Five to zero. Ordinance number 12-2017, an ordinance regarding bicycles and other wheel conveyances in the city or protected property. Thank you. Okay. Uh, those in favor of adopting the ordinance? We make a motion we adopt ordinance number 12-2017. Thank you. Second. Second. Seconded by Miller. Those uh, in favor of adopting ordinance 12-2017, please signify by raising your right hand. And it's nothing. Okay. The last ordinance that we have to deal with this evening is 13 2017. Uh, 2018 wastewater department budget. Uh, entertain a motion for the reading of 13 2017 by title only. Okay, moved by Goodman, seconded by Miller. Those in favor? Five. We got five, five zero. Okay. Ordinance 13 2017, an ordinance approving the budget for the municipal sewage works of the city of Rochester, Indiana, for the year ending December 31, 2018, and appropriating the several sums for the general funds of the sewage works through several uses and purposes as in the budget set forth. Okay. I would entertain a motion for the second reading of 13 2017 by title. So moved. Second. By Garrett, seconded by Miller. Those in favor? Five nothing. Ordinance 13 2017, an ordinance approving the budget for the municipal sewage works of the city of Rochester, Indiana, for the year ending December 31, 2018, and appropriating the several sums for the general funds of the sewage works to several uses and purposes as in the budget set forth. Okay. Uh, I entertain a motion on 13 uh, 2017. Make a motion and we suspend the rules and read ordinance 13 2017 by title only. I'll second. Okay. By Goodman, second. By Garrett, those in favor? Five or nothing. Ordinance 13 2017, an ordinance approving the budget for the municipal sewage works of the city of Rochester, Indiana, for the year ending December 31, 2018, and appropriating the several sums for the general funds of the sewage works to several uses and purposes as in the budget set forth. Okay. Make Move for a uh, motion to. I have a question. There yes. Is there an imposition in engineer project managers? Uh, yeah, Randy is our new project. Well, he's a project manager. Uh, it's a kind of an extension of some of the duties he has been doing. He he now interfaces uh, with all of the engineering companies we deal with. So the department heads uh, individually don't have to do that. Yeah, he carries the ball for all of that. That's not a, okay. You know, he threw me off my I'm, I'm, I'm out of rhythm now. <laughs> I, I would enter a vote on 13 2017. Those in. Make a motion to adopt ordinance 13 2017. Do we have a second? Thank you for getting me back. <laughs> those in favor? Okay, it's five nothing. Those in favor of ordinance 13 2017, please signify by raising your right hand. Thank you very much. 
carried by Zeke. Okay. Um, would like to remind everyone here on the uh, panel that we're having our uh, Christmas luncheon December the 15th. Yes. And you are definitely all invited. Significant other. Um, it's at Jaretti's. It will be the time shot is noon. noon. Looks like we're going to have a really nice feed. Uh, Dawn's opening up the uh, the new portion. Okay. I oh, yes. Uh, yes. And I do. If any of you are planning, I need an RSVP from you by December fifth. First, sorry, December 1st. Um, <laughs> so, which is Friday. <laughs> okay, good. So to let me know by Friday if, if you're planning and if you're bringing um, a, yeah, a plus yeah. one. Goodman has made a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? No, sir. Thank you very much, all.